Today, we're exploring Jim Stevenson's Backyard Wildlife Sanctuary on the outskirts of Tallahassee. It doesn't take long before we find ourselves in the depths of remote lands. We uh, bought this swamp about seven years ago in order to protect it and the wildlife that inhabits it. There's a lot of wildlife we just can't have without wetlands. Jim's wife, Tara Tanaka, documents the wildlife on their property. She lent us some of her video. This particular wetland is host to a specific type of home, a rookery. A rookery is a colony of wading birds, and that's the long-legged birds that we see in our wetlands. As to which bird roosts where in the rookery, well, there's a pecking order established amongst them. A wood storks are in the tops of the trees, as are great blue herons, but they don't nest together. The wood storks nest in colonies and groups, but the great blue heron is kind of a loner. He likes to be off by himself in his own tree. And then there's the anhinga, which is a uh, fish-eating bird as well. It spears fish as it swims underwater, and it nests relatively low as well, perhaps halfway up a tree. The lowest uh, probably is the great egret, which nests very low. In fact, it's so low that a large alligator could leap up and get the young out of the nest. Springtime in the rookery means lots of babies, and they can make quite a bit of noise. Birds are noisiest when their parent arrives with a full belly because they know they're going to be fed. It's uh, quite amusing as well to hear the a variety of calls, some uh, begging and some fussing. It is fun to look at all these adolescents waiting for their parents to come home. Would stork nest benefit from the protection of a few things? Water uh, helps to protect the stork nests from predators, from raiders such as raccoons, which are the worst enemy of our wading birds. So if there's water underneath the nest, that means there can be alligators in the water. They uh, protect the nest from raiding raccoons. With protection comes a price as well. Wood storks can be found year-round in Tallahassee, and you may not need to trek through the wetlands to find them. They could be found foraging in common urban landscapes like Lake Alberta. They can feed here, but need their rookery to breed and survive. At any rate, it's been a pleasure living here, seeing uh, everything going on every day, like a bobcat walking through the backyard, or a deer, or a red fox plus just uh, 156 species of birds that we've seen so far since we've been here. It's the kind of situation where we don't really need to travel to enjoy nature. It's uh, right here in our backyard. For WFSU with Rob Diaz de Villegas, I'm Carly Soder.